Okay, we're here to talk about the foreboding fractured with the filmmakers. Uh, can you just introduce yourselves, please, starting here, and, and your role in the film, please? So, I am Peter Silly, I'm the producer of this film, and I'm an actor starring as Aaron. Hi, I'm Kamal Yildirim, and I am the director and cinematographer. Uh, I'm Alexander Staunton Hill, I'm the writer and creator of The Foreboding Fractured. And legend. Wonderful, all round legend. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Um, okay, so Kamal, you're, you've had many films with us in the past now, across yep. our two festivals. Um, you didn't write this one, often, you often write your own, your own scripts that you film. What uh, drew you to this project? How did you get involved? Did it as a favour, really. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, Peter, I've known Peter for a while, we acted mm -hmm. together in Tales from the Great War, mm -hmm. and we kind of built up quite a, a good friendship together working on that shoot. And he just said, look, will you look at the script? You know, we, we, we're going to make this film. Um, and I looked at the script and I absolutely fell in love with the characters. Mm -hmm. I thought the way that Alex writes, he, he kind of writes characters that are real. They, they feel really real. They feel like there's a kind of history mm -hmm. between these four characters. And I really like how he made a, you know, he wrote a horror script that you didn't want the characters to die. <laughs> Whereas in most horror films that yeah. I watch anyway, that you kind of want the main characters to die because they're not um, they're not likable enough. Mm -hmm. And these characters are really likable, and I kind of like the. I'm a big fan of ghost stories, big fan yeah. of kind of folklore. So kind of wrapping these four characters in that world of a kind of ghost that's somewhere and yeah. going to attach itself to them, I just found really exciting. Uh, Alexander, um, where did the idea come from? How long were you? Sitting on it for? Did it come out quickly? How? Um, yeah. Uh, well, Peter basically he came to me and went, "I want to make a horror film," mm -hmm. um, and he kind of gave me the idea of keep it within a sort of teen story, horror mm -hmm. flick, woods, that sort of thing. Um, so, really, we had that conversation, um, and it was about three hours after that conversation, Peter received the first draft. And it was at a, a horrible time in the morning, so I'm sure he woke up with like a <laughs> like half day. So I'm like, what? <laughs> so, yeah, it was quite it was quite a quick turnover, to be fair. Yeah, I think the whole thing was quite a quick turnover, yeah, yeah. very quickly, because yeah. we had a kind of deadline and a, and a festival deadline in mind. Okay. Yeah. So we, I think Peter will tell you as the producer because it was up to him to put it all together. <laughs> yeah, but it was a very quick yeah. turnaround. Let's talk about your role then, Peter. What you know, tell us about producing how does it work yeah i mean like the boys said it was a very quick turnaround we had a goal in mind of getting a film uh submitted into horror and sea film festival and they wanted that first draft start of september i literally came to alex with this idea at the end of june quickly taking it to, into production yeah so we done it all in about two months literally okay. everything the whole casting process myself and alex went through quite a load of auditions that came through on twitter it just blew up massively okay. so we had quite a big response from that um, but obviously we found some brilliant actresses who brought the characters to life. And yeah, it was just a manic two months, wasn't it? It was absolutely crazy. Um, we definitely but, get that hot tub, 100%. Yes, we had a production <laughs> meeting in a, in a hot tub with some Prosecco. So that, I that was in this hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> you Sorry, you wasn't invited to party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I came on board with about two weeks right. before the shoot. Okay. So I had two weeks to kind of prep what I was going to shoot, how I was going to shoot it. Yeah. <laughs> Without really seeing much of the location. Right, OK. So it was a very quick turnaround. But it, these guys were brilliant to work with because, you know, the f they say the future of film is in the hands of, you know, the youth that's going to take it forward. And these mm. two really worked really hard and mm. really patient and give in to the, other, to the other cast and crew that were involved in the film. They're just yeah. great to work with, real nice people. Um, Peter, were you always going to be in the cast yourself? Um, I mean, primarily, <laughs> primarily, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an actor. Yeah. Myself and Alex was in another film called The Other Side, um, but mm. we was in different scenes, so we didn't really get an opportunity to act alongside each other. Yeah. But we're really good mates, so mm. I wanted an opportunity as well to act alongside Alex. Mm. Um, so when I came to Alex, I was like, if there's any roles that we could obviously star across each other, um, that would be brilliant. And then obviously the cats came across was two girls, two guys in a friendship group. And yeah. we both filled those roles. Yeah. Um, your actress, forgive me if I've, her name is escaping me right now, but she's been in a lot of, uh, lo especially locally shot films, hasn't she? Yeah, Eve Oliver. That's yeah. right. 
Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Actually, so you've worked with her before. I, you guys, I personally haven't worked. No, I actually worked with. E, sorry, I have worked with. E, <laughs> <not well. laughs> I worked with her on one short film. It's a very. Right. The reason why I nearly forgot it because it was shot so quickly. We shot a segment for the tales. Um, not tales. The video shop Tales yep. of Sarah. Right. So we shot a segment for that okay. together, <clears> and I worked with her there. And she was. She's just great. She yeah. really just really quick professional yeah. Yeah. knows a character quickly kind of gets to know the character quickly she's just mm. a diamond to work with isn't she she was great to work with oh, she made the job so much easier mm. like you know when you have some when you're on set you have so much to do you kind of need well considering i act alongside eve for most of the film yeah it was a real comfort especially like when we had so many issues happening in the background it's just good coming back as an actor mm. and having Eve there just kind of keeping that energy yeah. it was really 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 yeah, well she, she was great she and was she builds a brilliant fire oh, because it, they <laughs> mentioned that we had problems on the shoot that this right. whole set was bereft with loads of issues like we right. had a torrential storm okay. thunderstorms generators breaking down right. and we're in the middle of the elements mm -hmm. on a farm yeah. basically a farm like location so and we only had two days to shoot it Okay. So it was very quick turnaround, very quick going, and you know the first night we were actually meant to shoot the big campfire scene, mm -hmm. the generators packed up on us, and we right. we, we had no lights because all the, the lights that I usually work are hot lights that are working off generators. Mm -hmm. So we we had to go old school and build the biggest campfire we could, right. and luckily <clears throat> Eve is like a cat, uh, you know, like a girl scout. <laughs> she went and built the biggest fire for us, and kind of saved the day, really, didn't she? Yeah, it Pretty was. It was quite a close call because that because that one generator we could have lost in an entire, entire scene. night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, entire big scene. So we we do owe Eve big time for that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is an added bonus as well. If you find a brilliant actress and she's so good behind the scenes, helping mm. out with the crew aspect as well, yeah. she's really talented at that. Someone who can build a fire as well. And very yes. Handy. Um, whereabouts was the film shot? Where, where was your location? So it was actually in Sussex. Um, we filmed on a farm site where. We need the poo, blood and honey. They oh, had wow, some okay. scenes filmed so there as well. Did you mention that film today? Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, some of that was filmed there. But yeah, we started filming the end of July, going into early August. And yeah, we was met with the worst weather mm. possible. Mm. Height of the British summer. And it was just absolutely <laughs> pissing it down with rain. Right. So it was really unlucky in that front. Yeah, mud up to our mm. shins about there. But you didn't have any time to, by the sounds of it, delay to do another weekend or anything. So you just had to... No, because we had to book out the location for those specific days. Yeah. Um, so we had to literally get it all done within that time frame. So the pressure was quite high. Mm. Um, but everyone on that team was just absolutely brilliant. And mm. everyone everyone gave their 100%, didn't they, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, big time. Um, so, Kamal, your film last year, uh, The Lady Jane, mm. uh, shot on a canal boat. Yes. I remember you saying... You would never do a canal boat shoot again. That was a lot of issues. Yeah. Did this one, it, it sounds like there was quite a few challenges. W was it more difficult than the canal? Or is, is the canal boat still <laughs> the, uh, you know, the low point? I guess it, uh, <laughs> low point in my career, brilliant. Difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> um, to be honest, I think this shoot, if it would have went on longer for two days, it would have been more problematic mm. <laughs> because the weather really, really... Mm gave us a lot of lot of issues because we were outside in the elements yeah. there was nowhere for us to be able to put scenes inside or yeah. you know change schedules to kind of fit the weather right. like we usually <clears throat> have to do in England so it probably would have ended up being worse but the canal boat was it was more claustrophobic and cabin mm. fever setting because we were in these they look big but they're not very big when you've got a crew and yeah. cast and all the rest yeah. of it inside boats so I think the boat shoot was probably more prolonged suffering right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> whereas this was kind of quick blast suffering quick, quick suffering but you know we are we have got plans to do something with this film so you know right. the pain might carry on okay <laughs> what, what hopefully it won't <laughs> oh god yeah i'm looking at the writer on this one <laughs> yeah yeah i get with the stupid idea of maybe making it into a feature yeah so um i mean to be fair it was, it was sort of right off the uh the shoot um we're driving back to where we're staying and I basically just turned to Kamal. I was like, if I said I wanted to do a feature, would you do it? And he went, oh yeah. So it was kind of at that point where I was like, okay, cool. Um, kind of got to work on kind of figuring little tidbits out. Mm -hmm. um, 
and yeah, we've, we've been having plenty of conversations about it. Yeah. So we're uh, we're well on our way to figuring out what to do with it. Yeah, because there was a lot we couldn't. There was a lot we couldn't tell of the story because originally the script, Mr. Ambitious over it, he had a 40, 40, 40, 45 page script right. that he wanted us to shoot in about two and a half days, three days. Right. Um, which I said to them, you know, can be done, but quality is going to suffer. But anyway, anyway yeah. that's a different conversation. Yeah. Um, so we kind of had to make very fundamental, massive changes to the script on set. Right, okay. So, you know, uh, luckily the, the writer was also the main actor, so we yeah. kind of could tweak the script and you could tweak your mm. story and mm. cut out the elements that didn't necessarily affect the flow and mm -hmm. you know logic of the story so we we had to do a lot of that on set so we there's a whole bigger world there that we couldn't really manage to tell yeah. and and the story's there to be told and that's what we want to do with the feature we really want to expand it more and, and really yeah tell a lot more of the folklore elements and the ghost elements that's going on okay. that we didn't necessarily get the chance to tell yeah um, so you said it played at Horror on Sea. I've never heard of that festival, so we won't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> the festival that will not be named. I don't though. know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke, by the way. <laughs> in South End. Um, so it's played here. What yes. are your other plans? Are you going to other festivals with it? What's yeah, it's, like um, it's actually playing on Tuesday at Folkestone Film Festival. Okay. So that will be the third screening. Um, we've submitted it into some other festivals as well. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll wait and hear back from them, see if we get any success from that. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's doing pretty well. We've picked up an award, um, Pegasus Good Film film Awards. It picked up Best Horror Film. Mm -hmm. Two yeah. awards. Two awards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're very happy about that. But um, yeah, people seem to be enjoying it, which is another more reason that we want to make the feature as well, expanding yeah. this universe that Alex is building up to give it to the audience, really. Well, that was sort of the, the agreement, wasn't it? Was like, if, yeah. if people do want to see more, then we'll... We'll go ahead with that feature. We'll we'll do what we can with it yep. because let's be honest. If people aren't interested, what, you know what's the point? Yeah. You know, <laughs> like at that point, you're just twiddling your thumbs and be like, watch it. <laughs> yeah. uh, there is a good, really good story there that Alex hasn't mm. kind of we, we didn't manage to tell because of the time constraints and uh, mm. you know logistical nightmares that we had. Yeah. So. Um, so funding. How did you get funding for this film? And if you do. Uh, pursue a feature. What's your plan around that? Funding wise, I should probably ask. Who should I ask, <laughs> Mr. Producer? Yeah, ask the producer. Ask Mr. <laughs> producer first. <laughs> yeah, that's the question. I mean, with the short film, a lot of the money came out of our own pockets yep. to fund this film. We did set up a little funding page for it as well, which contributed to getting some of the money. Mm. Um, but a lot, of, majority of it, did come out of our own pockets. Mm. Obviously, we're poor now, so <laughs> going for the worst yeah. for the feature, um, yeah. we all need funding coming our way. But we're we're in some conversations with that at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, just see where it takes us. Yeah. Um, let's talk about some influences. So maybe one for all of you. I know, I know the kind of films that you enjoy. Come on, we've spoken about it before ghost stories and folk horror. I know. Mm -hmm. Was there any particular films? Let's start with yourself. Uh, any films that kind of influenced maybe some of your shots or how you approached it? Um, the tone that you wanted to set. Yeah, the tone really, because <coughs> because these two guys had a very specific teen horror yeah. kind of a remit that they kind of put put the film in. Um, I wanted to make sure it kind of had that feel, that campfire kind of Friday the Thirteenth, that mm -hmm. kind of feel that you know these kids are going somewhere and they're going to get trapped by something. So I want uh, you know those kind of films were an element. But me and Alex talked quite um, intently about. Evil Dead, so the colour okay. palette yeah. is very much Evil Dead and the kind of something within the forest and the forest itself might be attached to that evil. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to play it a lot with that. But obviously we didn't have time to really do the stuff we wanted to do. So in tone and, and colour, I'd say the Evil Dead probably is probably the biggest reference, which is not a film that I would usually go to as a reference mm -hmm. point for myself. Mm. I know I like the film, I think it's mm -hmm. a very good film. But I but yeah, I suppose that was probably the biggest yeah. influence. Did you have anything in mind when writing it? Loads. <laughs> yeah, I probably had <coughs> way too much in mind. Um, I mean, when Peter basically um, kidded me, I was like, oh, oh, you know, let's make a teen horror story. Um, the first thing that I thought of uh, wasn't a film, but it was a game that we both played um, called The Quarry. Okay. Um, Great game. It's it's amazing, especially considering it, 
you know, it's put into modern times and it, mm. it flips the genre on its head. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of looked at what they did um, and thought the one thing that they got really, really well done was the relationships. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so I kind of thought, okay, cool, they definitely have a palette there. Mm -hmm. So if I take a look at what I've done in the past and you know, sort of not replicate it, but make these characters feel as human as the guys that you would actually play in the quarry. Yeah. And that came across relatively easily because they start off as archetypes and then through sort of personal experience, then you can actually make them actual living, breathing people. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of the, the great thing about writing. Um, I think when it actually comes to the writing style, um, I've always sort of been more influenced by Russell T Davies. I mean, I, I grew up with Doctor Who, you know, Eccleston, David Tennant, like that sort of my era of Doctor Who. Yeah. Um, and I think the writing is always impeccable with yeah. it. So when it comes to the chemistry of the characters and how they sort of communicate with one another, yeah. it's very sort of inspired by how T Davis looks at the characters himself. Mm -hmm. Um, right, let's talk about next projects. So, what are you each working on at the moment that you're going to share with us soon? Peter, do you want to start? Um, yeah, I'm working on another film at the moment by director Mitchell Burrows, um, Ooh, Mitchell. titled Love Lies. Okay. Um, so, we've actually got one last day of filming this Sunday. And then we've as an actor? Yes, as an actor. Just an actor this time. Taking a break from the producing. <laughs> um, so, that's an exciting project in the works probably heading for release next year. Okay. Um, and then obviously we're in the early stages of the feature for the foreboding as well. Mm -hmm. um, Starting with that really, but that will be potentially filming this year, maybe next year, see mm -hmm. how it goes really. Could get that money first. Got to get the money. All about the money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Kamal? Yes, I've got a few things on the go because obviously I tout my various Your skills wheels. out as cinematographer <laughs> as well. Yeah. So I've got a couple of things that I'm working on at the moment. Um, I'm shooting two shorts for the horoscopes, the, the last entry in horoscopes. Okay, yep. I think it's called the, the, I can't remember. The third what it's one. Called. Yeah, the third one, yeah, <laughs> yeah number three. Horoscopes three, yeah. Um, so I'm shooting two short films in, in that anthology okay. film, which is quite exciting because they're both very good scripts and they're quite dark. Mm -hmm. The last ones I worked on were quite light, which yep. is not really my bag, I prefer the darker stuff. So yeah, so these would be really good to work on. I've got a film of my own that I'm potentially going to make by the end of the year, which is kind of like a ghost story noir. Okay. It's kind of set slightly period, but but not too okay. far back. Yeah. But it's kind of has that noir feel to it, and it's a ghost story, mm -hmm. which we're developing at the moment and potentially going to shoot on the Isle of Wight. That's where we the, okay. the location we're looking to shoot them. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, working with these guys on anything they've got going on because I absolutely love them. I've adopted them as my sons. <laughs> He's our film dad. Yeah, I'm their film dad. So, yeah, anything these guys are working on, I'd, I'd help out a drop of a hat because they're just really nice guys and they're the future of film. And yeah. for me, if I can do anything to help young talent to kind of really get out there and push their talent and learn that their craft, then mm. I'll do that. But, yeah, there's loads of projects I'm working yeah. with. Michael Fausti on his next one, yep. which we're just in the process of pre-production. Okay. Chow Handy's got a feature film. Um, that he's developing called uh, Vampire Cripple Gate, mm -hmm. which we're in the development of. So there's yeah, there's loads going on. So he's not very busy. No, <laughs> just a few bits. <laughs> loads going there. on here and there. <laughs> Alexander, what are you working on? Uh, yeah, well, the most obvious one is the feature of the foreboding. That sort mm -hmm. of uh, the forefront. Mm -hmm. uh, un unfortunately, the way my brain works, I yeah, I'm I just look to the future, really, don't I? I'm like, oh, let's do this, and then just see what happens. Right. Um, but other than that, something that is in very, very early development, um, which uh, I've been talking to Mitchell Burroughs and Peter about, um, is actually a gang film uh, set off the cuff of World War Two. So that's in very early development, trying to make sure that all the characters work and stuff like that. But that'd be really interesting to do, something I've never done before. Actually, you know, look at that side of the story of people actually coming out of the war and how that, you know, why they go into that gang life. It's always very interesting, right. you know. Excited about that one. Very excited. Yeah. It's it's gonna be uh it's gonna be pretty cool I think. Yeah, sounds pretty original. Um thank you so much for joining us and submitting your film and coming to represent it and uh talking to us. Thank you very much guys. Thank, thank you for having us. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.